At around my earlier years, during my adolescence, roughly around the late 90s, my father had brought home a beige-colored box with a few buttons at the front and a couple of connectors at the back one evening and wanted to see if it even works. But it didn't come with a monitor and so my dad decided to go and find one someplace. And it wasn't long until he did manage to find one as well with its keyboard and mouse in order to see if it works. And believe it or not, it did in fact power on and I've been meted with a desktop wallpaper that resembles a black window with four different colors making a startup sound and the next thing you know that's when we started to figure out what this box that my father found can be used for and during a time when the internet was just not exactly a thing that we knew about at the time looked around and figure out what the mouse can be used for and what kinds of programs are available and I guess you could say that would be my first introduction to how I got into computers at a time where most kids in the late 90s never even got exposed to a computer aside from whatever has been taught in schools as those were one of the only places where computers are often seen as well as some libraries of that era. And over the years, I've learned quite a bit about computers as I knew that one day these devices will become more commonplace to the point that they could one day be carried in your own pockets or in a far distant future might be even wearing them. But more on that later. When computers are being brought up, they're often regarded as office machines that are used to make documents, spreadsheets, keeping track of inventory, performing calculative tasks, and even communicating with other devices that are connected to the network. And in other instances, can be used to consume media across other networks tied together also known as the internet. But what if I told you they can be used for something else entirely, especially when they meet their end of usefulness, when it's believed that they are no longer needed for daily driving. But nonetheless, computers have become an integral part of our daily lives, transforming the way we work communicate, learn, and entertain ourselves. They are powerful tools that can help us perform a wide range of tasks efficiently and accurately. From managing complex business operations to creating artistic masterpieces, computers have proven their worth in various fields. One of the most significant advantages of using computers is their ability to store, organize, and analyze vast amounts of data quickly and easily. This makes them ideal for handling large-scale projects that require an enormous amount of planning, detailed analyzing, and precision execution. They can also help us automate repetitive tasks, freeing up our time and energy to focus on more creative pursuits or other things to focus on. In addition to their practical applications, computers have also revolutionized the way we communicate with each other. With the advent of email, social media, and instant messaging, you can basically keep in touch with friends, families, colleagues, and random strangers anywhere in the world. World. And with the added ability to use cameras to broadcast video, in a way, it had bridged the distance between people, allowing them to collaborate on various projects and activities, all without leaving the spot where an internet connection is present. But like most other technological innovations, and depending how well they're built, often or not, they have a limited lifespan as newer programs and newer hardware gets released and there's only so much they can be used for until they no longer meet the requirements to run these newer programs and you may be left with no other choice but to discontinue the old device and start using the newer ones in order to keep up with the changing times. However, 
that wasn't always the case as I do recall a time where I did have a computer that lasted me for nearly a decade as I have been able to replace parts and upgrade its storage, memory capacity, and graphics cards over time until I maxed out its usefulness and definitely had a long run up until it was time for me to put together a new computer to basically do it all over again. However, building a computer that lasts for a while isn't the only thing that has been difficult to achieve. However, there might be an instance where you may need to go places or you might want to move around quite a bit and yet you can't exactly bring a desktop with you as those are usually stationed to a singular spot and aren't exactly designed to be portable enough to just bring with you without needing to connect to an external screen if the place you're going to has one on site. And that's when laptops come to play. And although they can do somewhat the same things that a desktop can do with several limitations and often are not are typically not as powerful as a desktop as you can't exactly just swap out parts and replace it with other ones if something breaks. And as much as I would like to have a computer that I can just take with me that is just as powerful as a desktop, there are certain trade-offs that you definitely have to take into consideration. And so I decided to think about what I'm going to use a computer for when I'm out doing whatever it is I need to do. And for a while, I've always been researching for the one computer that I can use to do just about everything with limited success. And during that time, getting a computer like that is relatively expensive and hard to get a hold of, as most of the everything laptops have significantly shorter lifespans than desktops. And so I am left with choosing between mobility, usability, and how long it's going to last me and if this computer will fulfill all my changing needs as time goes by. And I guess in a way that's where my interest into computers really come into play here as I've been looking for a solution to solve an issue that I've actually had with most computers for a very long time and me always having to modify, optimize, and even pushing them to its limits to the point I end up breaking them. All because I wanted to do something that they weren't exactly designed to do, to say the least. So in order to build a computer that would fulfill a specific need, or better yet, how to go even deeper to the point of having to build the circuitry in on itself. And from the looks of it, it seems like that's the direction I'll be going if I want to build a device that I've been wanting to get a hold of for a very long time, instead of having to wait for these companies to come up with the next big thing, only so they end up breaking on you the moment you started to do something that they weren't exactly designed for, or are lacking the features that are very niche and not so commonly used. But one day, I would like to get into a project like that, where I build a device that can last me for a very, very long while. But then, that device that I have with me for such a long time would otherwise be outdated, and its use case may no longer be usable at a later future, due to how much technology changes over time. But I guess we'll have to wait and see. So in the meantime, I'm just going to work with what I got and continue to make use of the parts that are available to me and maybe find some new ways on how to use them and share my findings and what I've gathered so far. Most companies now have made and released products that have very short lifespans 
down to the point where repairability is becoming more and more difficult and even going as far as being anti-consumer with plan obsolescence resulting in the e-waste landfill problem simply because these companies want to sell more while making it more difficult to repair what they already own and some instances require a subscription for devices that are connected in the quote-unquote cloud and when the internet gets cut off or you lose access to the network those devices that are always connected to the cloud will render them useless so I'm not sure about you but I would hate to have to rely on the cloud just to use my devices that I have physical ownership towards simply because these companies decide to discontinue their service in favor for the latest thing that gets released and pushed more because I would hate to see working electronics that ends up in a landfill just because one thing breaks or its usefulness became limited due to the software that handicapped its full potential and hopefully you don't make the same mistake that others have made on the hardware side of things but that's just my whole take on it as someone that worked with computers and electronics for a large majority of my life and can appreciate the ingenuity and in my case I kind of find it pretty fun to work with computers due to that satisfaction that you get when you put one together and you know exactly what needs to be done if something decides to break or you have made a mistake when something breaks and it's only a matter of knowing what you did so you can go back and solve that issue in which that's something i had done quite a lot over the years until i got really good at fixing things that i break but that's just me experimenting and trying out things so if you want to get a hold of a computer or there's one that you would like but you're not sure what you're going to use it for my suggestion would be starting by trying out someone else's computer like for instance you might want to go to the library assuming that you don't own a computer already or even a smartphone but it can be any other computer that could be available to you like an internet cafe or some public computer out there so do keep in mind that if they're public chances are someone else can also look back at whatever you saved or browse or even have done with it so you're going to want to wipe out your browsing history or even files that you saved before you're finished using them you don't necessarily have to take a full-on course on how to use a computer as computers now are actually a lot simpler to use than they were back when I was growing up. As long as you have access to the internet or a network where you're able to access information or even other programs, applications, or anything really, you should be able to have everything you need to get around. It's only a matter of just really delving into it and figuring out what you're going to do. And better yet, take the time to figure out what kind of device is going to serve you. So for starters, you can get by with a really cheap system, but if you want to use programs or applications that require more powerful resources, then it would make a lot more sense to invest in a more capable system as long as the program or game that you want to run is capable enough. Plus, you may also want to decide if the computer you're going to use is going to stay in one place or you plan to go around places and you're not going to be in one spot. So it's either you're going to use a desktop if you want to stay in one place or a laptop if you plan to bring it with you whenever you go somewhere that you may also need a computer for. And finally, and the most important thing that will definitely save you a lot of time and headaches is making a backup of all your data. So you're definitely going to want to get yourself a means to store that data. And I do not recommend relying on the cloud to save your data as it's been proven over and over again 
The cloud cannot always be accessible to you every single time, and in some instances, some of these cloud providers may decide to remove your data just because they don't like the contents of it, or their whole system got hacked, and the next thing you know, you may no longer have access to that account, or someone else may have modified it. Now, this is not to say to never use the cloud, just don't rely on saving your data for the long term, and definitely get yourself something like a USB drive, or a means to physically store your information that is accessible to you even without an internet connection. So hopefully this will be useful and helpful to you if you do ever decide to get into computers for the first time. Even if that computer happens to be a smartphone or a device you're even wearing, it's always a good idea to keep a backup in this otherwise online only environment that everything seems to be going towards. Till then, this is LR7 talking about computers and logging out. Here. Really now?